What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Speak Easy Sports Show, college sports and high spirits. He is John. I am Daniel, and um, we are ready. John, you ready? We are ready for for rounds three and four. The Sweet 16 and the Elite Eight. I've had a lot of people tell me that this is actually their favorite weekend of the entire sporting calendar year. And I think this year, more than ever, I might tend to agree with them, John, because some of these matchups are absolutely mouth-watering. We're going to get to as many of them as we can on the episode. How are you feeling tonight? Oh, I'm feeling great. I, I agree. This is, you know, I... I we mentioned in the last episode, love the, love the upsets. I love round one. I love the Cinderella stories, all those things. But if you are a basketball fan, if you like good basketball, the Sweet 16 and the Elite Eight, it does not get any better than what we're about to see on Thursday and Friday and Saturday and Sunday this week. Um, and, and man, I, you talk about some matchups, Daniel. Oh, boy. Yeah, there are some storylines going into this weekend, so I can't wait. Okay, let me hit you here to start. Um, Give me the number one seed most likely to lose in the round of 16. So their first over like their first overall matchup. The round of 16. Give me the number one seed that is most likely to lose that game. Mm. You're going to hurt my feelings. Mm. Because it's going to be Houston. Oh. Daniel. feels disrespectful now that I asked it like that. I I love Houston. I have loved Houston all year. Okay. I have ridden with Houston, and I am so excited to watch them play. Mm-hmm. In this next round. Yep. But they got to play got Duke. Duke. They got to play Duke. And when yeah. I look at these one seeds, and when I look at who they're matched up against in this next round, ain't nobody playing a team like Duke as hot as, mm. as Duke is right now, as well as Duke has mm. played uh, as a number one seed. Ain't nobody playing a team like that um, on on their list right now. So that's the one that I'm that I'm going to go with is I think – I think Houston's ripe for it. Um, I think versus Texas A and M, you know, it's a it's a freaking nail biter. Um, and L J. Cryer fouled out against Texas A and a lot of foul trouble against Texas A and M. I don't hate your pick because I mentioned on the last episode. I think Duke has figured some things out. They've got other guys mm-hmm. that are scoring. I like that. If I'm Duke, certainly going into this game, and certainly Houston has shown some vulnerabilities. You and I, we didn't mention on the last episode, but let's let's come clean a little bit here, okay? Mm-hmm. You and I did not think Alabama was going to be advancing as smoothly and as comfortably as Alabama's been advancing in this tournament so far, John. And so, first of all, credit to them, credit to Nados. This is a team that was struggling late in the year. I'm talking about legitimately struggling. Obviously, they got Mark Sears, first team All American. Like a really good player. Um, but they were struggling, particularly on the defensive end of the floor. Mm-hmm. But but here they are in the Sweet 16, and they got North Carolina in the Sweet mm-hmm. 16. Now Armando Baycott's gonna be a problem for mm-hmm. Alabama. And I'm not necessarily calling for the upset, but I don't hate the matchup. If I'm Alabama, I don't hate the draw that I was given. Mm -hmm. I think Alabama can spread North Carolina out and will spread them out and will just try to shoot them out of the game. And if, listen, if there's a team in this tournament that can shoot you out of the game, it is Alabama. It is absolutely Alabama. Um, North Carolina has been a bit streaky at times. They have gone cold at times, and so I do think that there is a scenario in which Alabama gets the upset, and I'll say this, John. Purdue is playing as a, like a team possessed, like a team on a mission, as they should be. But I don't think Duke is the hottest team playing a one seed. I think Gonzaga 
is the hottest team playing a one seed. I think this Gonzaga team, particularly with what they have seemingly figured out in their rotation late in the year, they've made some cha- tweaks to their starting lineup, and nobody can stop Zach Eady. John, nobody can stop Zach Eady. But Graham E.K. is a really, really good big man. He is a really solid, and I think there are several big guys in this tournament that I would be excited to watch match up against Zach Eady. And EK is one of them at Gonzaga. I think they're going to throw a lot of bodies at him. And so we could, I could easily see all four one seeds winning. Mm -hmm. Also, I could easily see multiple one seeds going down in the round of 16. I don't think it's in any way unreasonable to think that that could happen. Now, the the one seed that we have not mentioned yet is the one that I think you can just stone cold take to the bank in the round of 16. UConn ain't losing that game. UConn is not losing their, their Thursday game in the round of 16. I'm not saying that they're going to make it out of the weekend and to the Final Four, but I'm telling you on Thursday, UConn is not going to lose that game. All right, let's start. Let's go back. We covered the one seeds. So now let's go back and let's quickly run through some of these other games. John, on Thursday night, the nightcap, this is my number one game of the Sweet 16. It might be my number one game of every matchup that's left in the tournament except a potential North Carolina, Arizona. And that is Illinois and Iowa State. You mentioned Illinois. They're the team of the tournament. What Terrence Shannon is doing is absolutely inhumane to some of these teams. And Iowa State is Iowa State. And TJ Otzelberger does not give two craps about what you think or having superstars or anything about anybody at any time Uh, scoring more than 80 points like he just doesn't no (laughs) does not care about it and cyclone fans love him for it absolutely love him for it what are you making of illinois and iowa state what excites you about this game most and do you have a a lean right now Mm. Yeah, I mean, what excites me ab- about it the most is the contrasting styles of basketball mm-hmm. that you're going to see, right? I mean, you have uh, Illinois who just fills it up and uh, and plays fast and gets up and down the court, and Terrence Shannon Jr. is lighting folks up, uh, getting a lot of, of support from other guys on the team too. Uh, and then you have Iowa State who, you know, really, I mean – it's not that they play slow, but they do what a lot of good teams do is they, they understand what their strength is in the matchup and they understand what your strength is in the matchup. And they just try to neutralize that. Right. And so I think we've talked about it. We've talked about Iowa state being that boa constrictor where um, they're going to figure out like in the first half, what you do well, they're going to wrap around you and prevent you from doing that. And so I think for me, that's my biggest, my biggest, you know, my biggest um, my biggest thing with coming into this game is can Iowa State – here's what I think. I think that Terrence Shannon Jr. is going to get his. I just think he is. And I think yeah. Iowa State, um, I think they're going to have to prepare for that and they're just going to have to prevent everyone else from getting theirs. Um, and so I'm just curious, like, can they do that? Can, can they, you know, um, make Terrence Shannon – beat you, which he can, but can they make him be that one man band that we talked about um, and, and neutralize everyone else? Or um, are they going to be in a situation where, you know, the thing with Iowa state, I think if they keep it too close, I don't think, I don't think Iowa state is winning a, you know, 79 to 74 game versus Illinois. Mm. I just don't think they are. I think if it's, if it's a close game like that, I think Illinois um, has the best chance to win. I think if they come out and they really, you know, shut them down and 